Hi everyone, so we have here the Maidea. We used to say Medea, but apparently it's Maidea. I started seeing advertisements for it. Uh, U-shaped air conditioner. It's pretty good actually. I, it, it cools down really nicely. When it was first working, it was super silent. It honestly saved my relationship because my girlfriend would demands it to be cold and we had loud air conditioners so you couldn't hear the TV or anything and that didn't help anybody. Let's just say that. But so 11 and a half months into a 12 month warranty, this start happened. We'll just turn it on, I'll show you. What a, what a noise. And it only gets worse the higher the fan goes. So, something's not right. So, I've, uh, I watched a few videos on taking this thing apart. And they're all pretty good but they all are missing a thing or two. So I decided I would uh, take you along with on this journey with me. So first things first, you gotta unplug it. <sighs> Cause uh, while taking this thing apart and putting it back together and taking it apart again, uh, sometimes, you know, I'd, I'd be testing a part or something and I'd leave it plugged in and I'd be fiddling with it. And I've uh, zapped myself a time or two. So don't do that. So first thing, you're gonna open up your little grate here and pull that open. And so there's just these little hooks here. And so you're just gonna pull up, it's hard to do with the phone, and it'll come right out like that. And put that aside. And then you have your filter here. You should be cleaning this a lot more often than you think. Uh, the app will have a reminder for you, but you see, mine's, clean. mine's nice and clean right now. But, uh, this, you know, there's a bunch of dust. There's all sorts of things. You don't want to breathe it in. So, yeah, once this is off, you've got three screws. Here. Here. And here. You just gotta unscrew these. These all have little plastic shields on the other side of them so hold on to them hold them separate from the other screws yeah just little plastic washers i like to keep them separate just so that i know which ones have it which ones don't and so i can put them back into all the uh, same spots all right now we've come to the hard part so running up here and along here and on the other side are a bunch of plastic hooks on the other side. They're about like here, 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 and so forth. They're like, I don't know, like an inch, inch and a half apart from each other. To unhook them, you have to push really, really, really hard. Fortunately, this thing is really sturdy. It's uh, it's pretty well made, um, besides my complaints about it. Um, but you got to push in really hard to make those hooks unhook. Um, and see, you hear that pop? 
those are good things. That's kind of when things are happening. I'm going to do it. It's going to come off a lot easier for me because I've done this, I don't know, a dozen times in trying to fix this thing. So it's going to be really hard for you. You think you're going to be not push you're going to think you think you think you're going to be pushing hard too hard but really you're not pushing hard enough it is yeah even still it's it's pop and just kind of work it see and I'll I'll, I'll show you see here's a closer look at the hooks like this side, it goes up above and next to this, and they just all hook into each other. Once you've done this a bunch, it comes off really easy. Like now, like that, I've gotten this first one off, it's just kind of popping apart. Just to show you how the plastic goes on. So you see these hooks here and people think, oh, well, they don't align with the plastic hooks on the front end. They're not supposed to. The plastic hooks on the front end, they go into these hooks here that are all around. So you think, oh, should I guide it onto this? No, this, this just guides everything else in. It's these hooks that you're trying to uh, separate the hooks of the front end from. So it's going to be, yeah, it's a lot easier for me. Almost do it with, see, just along the top here. There's going to be screws on the other side here too that we'll get to. And just coming down to the other side. I'm just trying to pop this off. I'll just kind of work it as you know work the loose end to get the side that's still in there we go off and so then yeah what you get yeah you see and just like that And then pull this off and it's going to be held on it's going to be still attached let's focus up by all these cables all right so I've opened the window to kind of show you um, you have some options here so once you have this front part off you can take it off it will make your life easier if you do but you know you can also just kind of futz with it and you know put it up on top like here you know holding it out of the way when you need to get to something because I know a lot of people are kind of intimidated by, you know, these cable connectors. And they are a little bit tricky. There's four of them. I've done some work on this leaving this front plate on. I will tell you, you're going to mash up against your grill here and do some bending of it which is not ideal I mean you know air is still you know it's still doing everything it needs to um, it's certainly not the nicest looking but you know who you'd have to if someone comes over to your house they're gonna have to open it up and take out your filter to look at it but uh, I recommend just you know going ahead and taking it off just so it's out of your way. So the first thing you're gonna do is come over here to your Wi-Fi module and push down. And you kinda of just slide it through here. Oh, you gotta pull it off for you. It comes apart, it's just a USB. And put that aside. Pull off 
push that through here, just like that. All right, let me show you. Yeah, just like that. So here's the first one. This is on the right side. And also, like, another reason to take this off is, like, otherwise you're putting pressure on your cables here, which, you know, it's probably not going to do anything, but, like, why take a risk? Let's focus on this. So, yeah, it's super small. You can see I, I have decently big hands, um, so this is, it gets a little tricky. So for this one, the trick is there's this tab here. Right in the middle, I think it's coming up. Right in the middle, you're going to want to press on it and to uh, gently pull. I don't know if I'm going to be able to film this and do it. So here it is out of uh, the connector, you see? So it's this little tab right there. Sorry for the fingernail dirt and all that, but I've been working on this thing a little bit. Uh, you push it in and you just kind of like gently kind of ease it back um, and then I'll just pop off and have the connector here like that. next is this one uh, he's a little different it's got this little white shield thing on it to get that off you just kind of pull up here and then slide it off and uh, be sure to save this it just kind of holds it together more and honestly if they have it it's probably a good idea to keep it all right yeah i can't take this apart and tape myself at the same time i'm all alone here um which is honestly not the ideal working condition to uh take apart electronics but you know this is what we are so it has uh, these two horns here so with one hand you're gonna kind of squeeze on them and then the other one, you see this little thingy here, this little lever thing. You're gonna push down at the bottom and that's gonna allow this to come up really smoothly. Just a little rocket back and forth, it'll come right out. All right, we just have the blue and white one to go. These are pretty easy. You're gonna press down on this part right here and just gently rock it back and forth and it'll come right out um, no I'm not gonna be able I'm not gonna be able to shoot myself doing that all right but here's the after so let's go over here see that Kinda, you push down and it lifts that little hook up so you can slide it out all right so now we are done with the front plate. So that's what we're dealing with. And now we're going to start loosening up the back. And so we have screws here, 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 here to give to take out. And this one has plastic shield, this one doesn't. And then we have Screw here, screw here. All right, just show you, to take the last screw out. And then this back part, it just comes right out. So put that aside. And now we have the guts of the Mydea U-shaped air conditioner. Pretty cool, actually. But we want to go farther. So we're trying to get into the motor and the blower cage. So there's a few screws we got to take out to get there. So there's one there, one there, one there. And then on the other side, we have this one, this one. Uh, we got this one, and then... This one here, and but there's a little secret. So back here, let me see if I can. So 
right in the middle here. You can come along and feel it. There's a screw right here. And this one is the pain in the ass to get to. I find myself, I got, I looked through, I found I have this like little Allen wrench with a uh, screwdriver head on it. Uh, that's what I found best, that works best. Cause I can do it from this side and crank it like this. So I don't have to go all the way, put my head outside, all that. I mean, it's not so far down. Um, there are also two tabs here, one there, one there, um, that come through. Um, I'll be honest, you're going to, you're going to push them out with your screwdriver. You're going to break them. These are the ones you're going to break. I don't know if this is just their way of seeing if you've serviced your unit or not or whatever, but yeah, you, you're going to break them. On a similar note, so pushing back this little foam thing here, you, I mean, you're going to rip this, but like this screw is at just such an awkward angle. You're going to have to push it in here. You're going to get like this. You're going to end up, if you're anything like me, kind of stripping most of it, honestly. But the end for me is still intact, so it's still holding everything together and still doing what it needs to so just just remember that this one this one's a toughie figured i'd chime in on the other side this one it's a little bit of an awkward angle too it's not as bad so mine is still pretty well intact so don't fear this one as much and so for the little hidden screw i like using this allen wrench because it's just like this you know um you just have to remember that it's gonna be reversed, so righty Lucy, if you don't, you know, stick your head out the window. Also, just word of advice, like some of your screws from here are gonna fall into here. That's where a slightly magnetized screwdriver uh, comes in really great. Yeah, but so, so next thing is this little guy. We like to call it the coffin because it kind of resembles that. Um, so it's on here. It's secured with a screw way down there. But first, we're going to open up. And this one, honestly, this one I've stripped too. So I'm just going to pull that out. And then I, keep, I put a piece of tape on here to keep it open. And so it goes like that. And then it has like this little latch over there. So pops out like that and so there's two cable connectors in here be sure to look at how they are in here because they don't go in any other way like this is one you're going to really have to pay attention to the details um it's the big one kind of doubled over like this one and then this smaller one kind of like in there like that um yeah and so you're gonna need to disconnect these guys and these are easier you just press down i don't think i can get this one handed but it's the same it's this little press down releases releases the hook up there and you kind of gently rock it out um same with this same with this one too so here's the after. See, it's like that. Going on to there. There's a little groove in there that the hook goes into. So yeah, now push them out of the way so you can get a clear shot to this screw here and take out the uh, the coffin here. All right, so the coffin's gone, and now we're coming up to some tabs. So we have a tab here, and then up here, and then you have these, which mine are broken. So on the motor side, there's here, here, 
and all the way down here. The best way is to just push into them with a flathead screwdriver and try to push them, push them through. You kind of see how it's flexing here. You just want to push in and then try to wiggle this back just to kind of move this, because this is the part that's coming out. The back is what's coming out. So we push and just kind of get it past each one of these latches. Um, a good order I have found for this is starting the top. And just working your way down, just wiggling all the way. All right, so my latches are undone. And now you can see this is kind of starting to come apart. So here's where it gets a little tricky. So this last one that, I, that you do, it's right where these pieces come together. And so it kind of makes this weird force to where it kind of comes up like that, kind of locks it all together. Um, this is gonna be a pain when you put it back together too. But you just have to kind of work with it and try to kind of go straight back as you can even though like you know the base of this plastic piece is like pretty well anchored in right now it'll come loose but see we can kind of come up and we can pull and this gets us to our motor and our blower and yeah we can kind of get in so that we can pull them out and so the motor see it has this cable and it kind of comes through there so you come up and up. And then it's free all right, so I have the motor and the blower, and I pulled out this plastic piece. Once this is out, and you can probably do it with it in too, but you just kind of like, you just kind of pull it up and wiggle it and uh, it'll come free. And so now you can come in here and I mean, it's looking kind of okay now. Some of you have mold, so this is where you clean this up. Honestly, if you are, opening, going through all this trouble to open this up, I would clean it. Just whatever, you know, household sprays and disinfectants you have will probably work out. Look at that shine, wow. Um, yeah, like it wasn't dirty, but look just how much better that is. Don't you, I would breathe off of this, you know? <laughs> so this is the motor unit and the blower as they're kind of supposed to be. I just want to walk you through how this works because knowing this would have helped me troubleshoot everything a lot faster. So basically the blower is held onto this rotor with this screw and uh, there's a little stopper right at the end, a little metal stopper. And that will show you exactly where the blower goes. Uh, if you put it anywhere else, you're gonna get problems. Uh, and I'll demonstrate in a second. On the other end is this little rubber bumper thing. And uh, it, uh, it holds in place and it has a little metal circular thing. I'm not an engineer, so I don't know these things. That, that, and I, I grease it up. And this little metal thing and that this little metal bit here comes in here and it spins around. This should not move. Okay? This should not move. It has these uh, ridges here and you can actually kind of see in here there are little ridges or these. So this shouldn't move. I've, I've heard uh, some people, I've been looking all over for solutions on fixing these things. So let me take that out. 
And so I've heard some people complain about like a sandpaper noise. That's what this is. Uh, that means this is not seated right uh, in one way or another. I've heard of people putting washers on. You know, I don't, you know, who, I, I can't tell you what your problem is exactly. But any noise like that, and it'll be like, you know, a lot more consistent. I can't do 1400 RPM spinning like this. It, that's what it is. It's just this hitting against something. One of the problems could be is I took this off to clean it and i just show you in here. So this is how it attaches. And it's the flat side of the rotor here goes on to where this screwdriver, this screw is. And you can see through this missing blade. If you just casually put it back on and don't put it back on to where the flat side is matching this, it's not going to go on all the way. I learned this the hard way. And so I had it to where this thing, this blower, was farther out, farther this way. And so it went on this, and actually you can see it here actually wore down this rubber stopper. So, of all the things you do, placement of this on this rotor is going to be the most precise thing that you have to do. So, like I said, this screw is what's holding this blower onto this motor. So, you're going to come down here and again, magnetize screwdriver head, you know, just don't put it against a, like a circuit board and you'll be pretty good. There we go, I can get this one handed, oh great. Like that, there we go. Um, yeah, so unfortunately for me, mine is just kind of stuck on here. And what I have found and this is something you should probably not do. But taking it to the sink and running like hot, 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 hot water over this little, where this screw goes with this little metal bit in here, it expanded it up enough to where I could get this seated properly. So this worked for a while while I was waiting on another part. And hopefully it'll work to where I can get this off of here because a fan doesn't work without blades, you know? So that's the hope. I don't recommend you doing it because if you get water on this motor and you plug it in, you're gonna have a bad time. Also, you know, just I make sure everything is dry before we all plug it back in, you know, but water on this is not good. All right, we got it off. This is actually looking, eh, it's kind of clean. Kind of not so I'm put in the bathtub. Spray it down with your household cleaners. You can go like blade by blade and like wipe them all down like that. It's gonna be a lot of work. So I'll try to find something that just gets all the crap off and then run it under some water and hopefully that'll get it pretty clean. I don't know why I'm showing you this, but here's the rinse stage. While you're waiting for everything to dry, this is a good time to just kind of clean everything down. You don't have to by any means, but I don't know. Less dirt and grime to get in the uh, air that I breathe, and yeah, not, not, not necessarily such a bad thing. Um, as always, let everything dry all the way before you start plugging anything in or doing anything. All right, so this is just for if you're having the same issue that I have. 
I put the, together the front end again. This is just so I can turn it on. I'm gonna plug it in. Uh, always, you know, be super careful when you do this sort of thing. But this is just so I can turn it on and see if this is what's giving me the issue. Yeah, and that is clearly clearly the issue. So now I know. I can. So now I can definitely say, okay, this this motor is the noisy thing. So that's what's got to go. All right. So here's where things get a little bit experimental. I have two motors here. Do you know which is which? Which is which is the original? I do, but you know, I set this thing up. So I managed to find this replacement on Amazon. Do you know which one it is? It's actually this one. It looks just about identical. It's maybe fraction thinner maybe not i don't know but i actually found this on amazon there were some on other weird sites that you'd have to ebay and uh some others and you'd have to get them shipped from china and it was going to take you know four to six weeks or you could pay three dollars and get this one from amazon so that's what i picked the most important thing is like all these numbers here, they have to match. Let's get the focus on it. So this is 310 volts, 13 watts. 310 volts, 13 watts, so on and so forth. It looks to be about the same thing. Uh, maybe a generic version. My idea does not make getting parts for these things easily you go to websites that are authorized to sell my idea parts and they don't have any for this unit i don't know if it turned out to be less popular or people are just like well this seems tough let me just throw it away get a new one whatever but uh you can't get parts so easily that's going to be if you're replacing anything on it that's going to be even harder than pushing the hooks open also important, this is a little diagram of what wire is what and where it is. And so there's also this one. They're not in the same order, which uh, is a little concerning, except the cables uh, are. So cables like blue wire, uh, focus up, come on. Like blue wire, uh, yellow wire, white, black, red. And then, you know, blue wire is the same on both. Yellow is the same on both. They're all the same. It's just a different listing order. And that's a sticker thing, I hope. But yeah, they come, they come out in the same order. More importantly, they go in in the same order, even with the same little gap between black and red. The connector is the exact same. So I don't know if this is just like a generic or, you know, the way manufacturing works these days is, uh, you know, one part is in a billion things. So we're gonna give this a try. And right, I just wanted to show you this again. So right now I have the blower. You can kind of already tell. See, it is way, it's got a lot of distance between here and here. And the first time I put this back on, like that's where it stopped. So I thought, okay, that's great. It makes this a little crowded over here. As you can definitely tell, like this groove should, this groove should, uh, you know, these two teeth should 
fit in there. If I can get this to focus. See, yeah, it should be kind of like that. And that causes the sandpaper noise. So, if you hear that, you're probably too far this way, too far that way. So don't, so you can, depends on what way it is, how you would fix it, maybe some washers, maybe just putting it back on to where it meets its little metal ring. All right, so putting this on the right way, we're gonna go find our little gap. Here it is. This is the flat end of our rotor. Let's put that up like that. And yeah, this old one had it, so there we go. But it slides on. So nicely, so easy. That's how it's supposed to do it. And just put it all the way up against this little ring here. My old one and my new one have the ring at the same place. Again, it makes me think that it's just a generic version, but it fits there perfectly. And then, you know, uh, I'm just gonna add that little screw in there. Again, thank you to a magnetic screwdriver because otherwise, <laughs> I don't know how you would do it. All right, so we have the motor, and now it's attached to the blower. And look at that. It's nice on, it holds on, it's nice. Uh, what's nice about this is that it has a little bit of give because of this rubber grommet in here. So it doesn't, nothing has to be as super precise as like on some other things. And then we have our little stopper on on the other end. We're just going to lay it down so there's the two holes here you can put it the wires through either i honestly don't remember how it was the first time i've been just kind of putting them down the lower one just kind of as a more direct path but then we just kind of lay it down there and yeah and you'll see like You'll worry about like laying it down on the wires, but there's a gap here because this and this rubber stopper are what's going to be holding in place. And so there's the rubber little end here with the little nib. If it's right into this little notch for it, there's not one up here, there's one down here. So this lines up and you can place your wires wherever you like them. Uh, like, no, that's probably pretty good. And you can simply like rotate or it comes right off. Like just kind of put it and then put it back on so that everything's laying how you want it. And then we give it some spins and it seems to be going free and easy. So that's a good placement for it. This groove, it fits right on those two teeth right there. And so that means that it's placed pretty good. Okay, so we've gotten everything cleaned up in here, in here, we got this new motor. Oh, I, I so I did reach out to like a uh, more engineered minded friend of mine. And he did say, okay, I, I ran him through all everything. He said like, it should be good. Uh, and that the worst that could happen is uh, that it could start a fire. Um, so, I have my fire extinguisher here just in case, <clears throat> but I'm not worried. I'm really not. Um, but just so you know, uh, I'm not responsible for anything you do. That's the truth. All right, so we just take this and we just try to guide it back into where it was. Like, the plastic is all the way at the end back there and it just hunkers up yeah there we go next to all the uh copper tubes and stuff like that like there's cuts here that go along all this so just make sure it generally lines up on the outside like right now it's working way high and you just kind of have to fidget with it and over here, you have the power cable, which is big and thick and uh, gets in the way for sure. I think I'm just too far forward. Over. Okay, oh, this side's good. And there we go. Okay. 
Let me just show you one little bit here. All right, well, I'm going to be real honest with you. So the real reason this uh, fit in so well together is because I finally broke this tab, uh, the tab that goes in right here. This one for reassembly is a nightmare. It is always because you're coming down, and so it's like getting caught right there on it. And so you're having to fight it, and, uh, you know, you, because this has to fit in back there, you really can't come in so straight on it. So you have to kind of come in and finagle it and it puts a lot of stress on it. And, uh, well, finally mine gave up the gut. I could probably plastic glue it if I really wanted to. I want to see how well this holds together without, and maybe, maybe we'll let it slide. But that is... That is going to be a pain in your behind, I tell you what. That, is, that tab, when you're putting this back together, is just going to be a pain. And also, before you put it together, make sure your motor hasn't slipped down like mine has. So I'm just going to you know, put it back up here. Well, I'll do it when I'm not holding the camera. So everything is snapped together real nice. Everything's lining up. It's looking good. Back over here. Like, you know, it's all pretty good, so it's in a pretty good spot. So now I'm going to put these screws in. Yeah, I'm going to put all these back in. Basically the opposite of what you did earlier. And just a little tip when you're screwing all these back together, just make sure all your holes match up. There shouldn't be, it shouldn't be tough to screw these back together. See like here, like the big hole and the smaller hole, they're all matched up and that screw goes in real easy. Like that's what you want it for everything. See this one is just a little bit off. Just give it a good push and it'll line right up and that's perfect. That's great. And make sure, you know, all your other unbroken tabs are in their slots. And don't forget the little secret one back here. I have my little tool to do it. Uh, it's still it's still a little bit of pain, and there's no way I can take myself doing it. But just follow along. There's the hole, and yeah, yeah, because your your regular screwdriver is going to hit there. So something short, and then if you're doing it from this side, it's going to be lefty tidy. If you're outside and coming back in, it'll be regular. Oh yeah, and there's these tabs, which, oh, mine are almost kind of sticking through. You probably can't see because of the shadow. Um, yeah, hey, look, I am going to guess that you broke them. That's just how these go. It seems like everyone who's done service on them has broken these tabs, but it doesn't seem to matter. It seems like as a whole, like everything is holding together pretty dang well. It's a sturdy, it's a well-engineered machine, I, I gotta say, besides this motor giving out. And, uh, hopefully, hopefully, this thing will work. All right, what's next? What's next? That's right, it's the coffin. There's probably some lame industrial term for this, but uh, coffin is so much cooler, and it just fits on there. There's a little nut back there. I mean, you've taken it apart at this point, but yeah. Just get all these out of the way, put it back in. All right, call the undertaker, the coffin is in its place. And then we're just gonna put the cables back in. So it goes the small one first and then the large one. Yeah, and then just tucked back there. I'll, I'll show you when I'm done, but I can't do these things one-handed. There's nobody else here, so. All right, everything's plugged back in. And so small one and the clips face in. I, who knows how much difference that makes, but everyone else was saying it matters the order and that everything is fussy. So we're not gonna mess with it, I guess. Yeah, it might, there might not have been enough uh, wire to come out around like this. Maybe not. So maybe it does have to come out the bottom. Yeah, there we go. That's 
pretty much how it is. And I'm gonna put the lid on and we're gonna hook it on this little clip here. This clip here. And then we're gonna put a screw in here, but mine's stripped and so I put some plastic tape on it. Uh, and it seems to be pretty fine. Like, I, this kind of isn't really going anywhere, but it's nice to keep everything tidy. And, uh, you know, that's what we like. So we don't have to, like, open this thing back up because of a frayed wire or something dumb like that. All right, something I just ran into. So the way that these wires are put, uh, you can kind of, like, kind of cross them over down there and what that's going to do is that it's going to make your mo your motor wire um, not have enough room to kind of get in here so you kind of want to just make sure that this one just goes in all the way first and then do the other one I'm still learning to come on so here it is. Uh, it's kind of popping out just, but that's why we have all this stuff. So this, we're going to hook on to this notch right there. Push that back in. And then, oops, go, we're going to go get that back. But then we're going to screw it back in there. All right, there it is. Whew. I am about ready for this to be done because it is getting hot. So... Uh, yeah, so everything is uh, sealed up pretty good, holding together. So now we just, uh, we take the back. And we're going to slip that back on. And here's here's my little trick for getting the back on. Mm -hmm. So there's these plastic uh, wings. Um, I do not use them like this window doesn't need me to do that for whatever reason but uh it's gonna go on so much easier if you just go ahead and extend them out just because you know they they're come on the, they fill in on this side so we just kind of go back and shimmy this on and just kind of try to guide it down the main, one of the main things is we want to be on this side of this bracket. We want to be kind of lined up. We want to kind of go over. And yeah, like that. We want to just kind of slide in over this. And you're just going to wiggle it back into place and it'll, yeah, it'll pop in. This side, ooh, that. Okay, and so similar to before, it should, there we go. It should line up with the holes on the other, on the other side. You shouldn't have, be having to force anything. And this takes a regular screw, and this takes one with a plastic washer. And then uh, there's the screw here. And this screw here. We are almost done, I swear. All right, we are screwed in. And on the other side too. And so now we just go. It makes that noise, it doesn't sound, it sounds like you're breaking something, but you know, it's just how these things are supposed to go. There we go. Uh, putting this back on, it, it's a lot easier with the wings out. All right, so now we got the back end. Now it's time to do the front end. And so it's really, it's going to be just the same deal. We're going to reconnect these guys and all these. And these, most of these guys, like this guy... You know, he goes white to white. It's really just going to be pushing it in. Just make sure that this tab, tab side, 
this aligns with the hook part for it. And this guy, same deal, goes to this one, except it's got that little white piece. I'll show you that later. And then same with this one here. So I'm going to attach them and just set it back up. All right, so we got this guy and we got this white piece. We just kind of to put it back on. You got to just hook it on. Oh, boy. It's hard to do one-handed. Oh, there we go. Just like that. The thick end goes down. There's more room because there's a big gap. When come on. There's a big gap, bigger gap here than here, so fill it in. Okay, so the last thing you want to do before you put it back on is this USB. You just kind of want to fish it through this hole so that you'll be able to get to it later. And I'm realizing, uh, you know, I guess we really didn't have to disconnect this blue one because it just stays here. This is the thermometer, by the way. Uh, but, uh, yeah, after all my time is taken apart, uh, I'm just realizing that now. I, I don't really regret it. Everything's been fine. All right, we're just about to finish putting on, but just a little word of caution. Make sure that all your cables are tucked back into where they need to be uh, before you uh, slam this thing back on. Like over here, I had uh, one of the cables around this hook before. It wouldn't have been good if I pushed it on, so just make sure you're all clear. And we are looking that way. And then we just kind of push it back back in those place. But this part isn't easy either. So just be warned. Uh, it's gonna take some futzing and I'm gonna, I'm gonna need two hands for this, but uh, it should seal up nice like it was. But yeah, you just kind of push it back and just kind of use the guides and hope, uh, you know, make sure just everything's lined up as it needs to be. There we go. Let's pop it back on. See, just like nothing happened. All right, let me finish this. All right, we are going strong. It's all lined up. It's all pretty. Sturdy there. So now we can close the window. Ah, nice and quiet again. And then next step we have the Wi-Fi dongle. Um, the app for this is really good. I have to say, I, I'm really impressed for it. I find it really handy. Um, what's interesting is that I also in the other room have a Danby air conditioner and I don't know if there's like a standard air conditioner protocol or something like that but the Danby works on the Medea app and using the Medea app I can get features on the Danby that uh, I wouldn't be able to otherwise so if you have other AC units might try to pair them to your Medea app and see what happens. Yeah, but this this thing is just USB, which we can even get one-handed, yeah. And then just kind of tucks in here and press it close. There we go. And so, screw there, screw there, screw there, all with the plastic shields, and uh, we'll be right there. Okay, screws are in and now we just replace the filter look at that clean filter 
that's how you want them. And then just in the guide track there, then tuck up, tuck up. Beautiful. And now our little front end, and it just hooks back in like we had it. All right, look at that. That is, it's like we didn't do anything. So it's all back together, one piece. Look, I don't know anything about this back piece here, so um, don't ask me about that. But now we're going to plug this in. Look at that, that works. And fingers crossed. Oh my God. And it's on cool even. Oh my God. This is, this is what it sounded like when we first got it. Oh my God. I love this thing again. Oh my gosh. The, uh, the swing is doing great. Let's pump it up. Oh yeah. It's blowing cold. This is great. I have the fire extinguisher right here, but I don't think we're gonna need it. Uh, great. So, why do we do? We changed out the motor. So, instead of a repair that would probably cost more than the new unit or a new unit, we did it ourselves. And what did it cost? Uh, three broken tabs, two script, two script screws, uh, about less than 40 bucks for that new motor on Amazon. And uh, yeah, so there's one more important thing to do. Crack yourself a beer, because you earned it if you did this. This is not easy. Um, but yeah, this is, oh, I'm so happy about this. I'm so happy about this. All right, uh, yeah, so uh, does you have any other notes of where I could have done this better, things I didn't need to do? Just leave a comment. Um, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a mechanical guy. I just wanted to fix this dang thing. You know, like, th there's two kinds of engineers. Ones that are like, oh, you can't do that. That goes against section 2307 of some book you never heard of. Or the others that just like put tape on it and shit like that. This, this leans more to the other ones. Okay, well, all right, uh, thank you. And yeah, hope this helped.